Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go through all the steps showing you how to build your own Rubens tube. First we'll go over the overview and a schematic of the setup and I'll show you all the parts that you'll need to buy, then I'll show you how to build it, and then I'll show you how to safely run it. Please check out the video description because there's links to everything that you'll need down there. Here's a schematic overview of the entire setup. I'm breaking this into two sections. The first section is the tube section which is outlined in red here, and the second section is the gas section which is outlined in blue. We're going to build these separately and then in the end we're going to connect them with a flexible hose. The circled numbers on the screen here uh, correspond to parts listed in the video description and they'll also pop up on the screen as I'm talking about. Them. All right, so here's the overview of the setup. We have one, a propane tank, uh, to which a regulator is attached. That's number two, which brings the pressure from the propane tank down to a usable, safe level. We want a little bit more adjustability, though, in the uh, gas pressure that we have coming out of the regulator, because this one, at least mine, does not have a does not have a valve attached to it. So I bought a uh, another valve, a ball valve, four, and to connect these two together, because both the ball valve and the regulator have uh, female attachments, so we use a hex pipe nipple. That's number three to attach the two and then we need some way to attach the ball valve to the hose that we'll be using so we're going to use a barbed uh, adapter fitting five then we have a flexible hose that runs from that barbed fitting to another barbed fitting uh, and that's number seven which is attached to the uh, galvanized steel duct that we'll be using for the tube. That's number eight. On one side of the uh, tube is a flat cap. That's number nine. And on the other side, we have a flexible diaphragm, latex glove, balloon, whatever you want to call it. That's number 10. And then right outside uh, the diaphragm, we place a speaker. That's number 11. And then we can play music through that speaker. You can see we have holes drilled in the top of the tube here. And when we have gas flowing through our system, the only place that the gas will exit is through these holes on the top of the tube. When we play music through the speakers, standing waves will set up uh, uh, in the tube at the correct frequencies and that changes the flow rate of the propane out of the various holes and you end up being able to see, you essentially be able to see the sound uh, when you light the propane coming out of the tube and you get to see those flames in a nice sinusoidal shape. Quick note before we get building, with these parts that I've mentioned here on the board and in the video description, you will definitely be able to build this setup using the exact parts. That's not to say though that this is the only way to do it, I'm just telling you that if you want to be sure that everything's going to fit together perfectly, I would recommend buying the stuff that I outline here. We're going to start our build with the tube section. You'll note that the galvanized steel tube we bought is not technically a tube yet since there's an open seam that runs down its length. So it's made such that you can close the seam, so that's what we're going to do now. And it's easy if, if you have someone that can help you, but if you're by yourself, I recommend taking a few pieces of tape, pulling the seam towards itself, and tape them close together. This way we can get the seam started, move along the tube, and then we can remove the tape as we get to it. Now that the tube's closed, we're going to put a piece of tape all along the seam. We're using propane, and propane is heavier than air, and when we set this up, the seam will be on the bottom and we don't want any gas leaking out. I use a type of aluminum tape or foil tape here. If you delve a little deeper into the topic of HVAC, you'll find that you don't want to use duct tape on ducts, which sounds sort of counterintuitive. I won't go into the details here, but it's best to use foil tape, and it's no more expensive than any other type of tape. For this application, it won't really matter, but if you're debating which one to buy, just go with the foil tape. So I start the tape on one end of the tube and pull a single piece all the way down the tube and make sure it covers the seam and then at the end push it down with your fingers just to make sure you have a good uh, adhesion there. You'll be able to see that one end of the tube is corrugated and this is the end to which we'll attach our cap. So take the cap and slide it onto the end. This should be easy if you've closed the tube correctly. We will tape the cap to the tube with the foil tape. So I found that if you don't actively push the cap on while starting the taped seam, it won't be on all the way. It kind of slides back out a little bit. So I took a little piece of tape, pushed the cap in as far as it would go, and taped it in place so that it wouldn't move back out. Then I finished taping the seam with a single piece of tape all the way around. Now it's time to drill the holes where the propane will come out of. So take a piece of masking tape and pull a piece from one end all the way to the other end. Make sure you're drilling these holes on the direct opposite side from where the seam is. That is, the seam is on the bottom and the holes are on the top. We don't want the holes drilled all the way to the ends because we'll get close to the diaphragm and the speaker, so we'll take that into account with a little offset from each end to make it look nice. I personally like a 5 inch offset, but you can do what you want. Whatever dimension you choose, mark it off with your ruler from each end. Now take your pencil and ruler and starting at the 5 inch offset, every 3 quarters of an inch mark a hole on the masking tape with your writing utensil. I'm using a sharpie here. Keep going until you get to the other end's offset mark. You might note that using these dimensions, your last hole won't line up nicely with the 5 inch offset on the other side, but that's okay. I just marked the last hole a quarter inch past the offset line. It's really not that noticeable. If you really want to get crazy though, you can use a 4.875 inch offset on each side and all your problems will go away. Now it's time to get your 16th inch drill bit ready. It's a small bit, but it should come with pretty much every standard kit. 
If you guys like repetitively drilling holes, then you've picked the right project. Make sure to keep the drill vertical as you do this. The bit is small and can bend if you go in sideways. Also try to make sure you keep all the holes in a straight line. If you're off by a little bit though, it's not a big deal. I can't speed up this video any faster, so I'm going to skip ahead because this is super boring. You can take the tape off the tube now and wipe it down with a paper towel since there's probably still shaving sitting on the tube and you don't want to cut yourself. The next thing we want to do is drill the hole where we will be attaching the hose barb to the tube. I take another piece of masking tape and mark the middle of the tube by using a tape measure to find the 30 inch mark since the tube is 60 inches long. We want our hose inlet to be on the back side of the tube so we don't see it. In other words, it will be halfway between the bottom seam and the top holes at the middle of the length of the tube. Now we need to drill the hole. Recall that we are using a quarter inch MIP barbed hose adapter. However, the quarter inch designation doesn't actually refer to a physical dimension. Take a look at the link in the video description that will take you to the engineering toolbox website, which is also shown on the screen now. We find the entry in the pipe size column that says quarter inch. Then we can see that the nominal outside pipe diameter is 0.54 inches and the tap drill to use is a 7 16 inch bit. This is the reason I chose a quarter inch adapter because the biggest drill bit that I had available was a half inch. If you have a standard drill bit set from Home Depot or Lowe's, that's probably the biggest one you have too. If you decide to go with a 3 8 inch MIP barbed hose adapter, you would need a 37 64 inch bit. With the quarter inch being set by my max bit size, the only nylon adapter I could find that would also attach to my 3 8 inch inner diameter hose was a 90 degree elbow, so that's why I chose that. If I could find a straight adapter with the correct dimensions, I probably would have used that one. I also chose nylon because it's cheaper than brass, and because the thermal conductivity of the galvanized steel tube is relatively low, I wasn't worried about the barb softening or melting. In order to drill the hole for the adapter, we're first going to drill a smaller pilot hole. I think I used a quarter inch bit here. This makes it easier to keep your hole centered because a bigger bit will drift off your mark if you try to start with that. After drilling the pilot hole, you can grab the half inch bit and drill into the tube. When you do this, you'll probably find that the hole is jagged and sharp and not really the kind of hole you were hoping to get. That's okay, just take a file and smooth it out. After filing it, shake the shavings out of the tube so nothing gets stuck in there when we put the diaphragm on later. Now we can insert the barb. You should be able to sort of screw it into the hole. The wall is so thin and the nylon threads are kind of soft, so you can screw it in or you can push it in, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure that the hole was big enough such that screwing it in wasn't too hard, but also small enough that it didn't just fall through the hole. If you're using the 90 degree elbow barb like me, make sure that when it's all the way screwed in, the barb end points down toward the bottom seam. Now take some foil tape and tape around the adapter where it meets the tube. I think I used a couple pieces of tape here. This is just to prevent the obvious leaks. The last thing we need for the tube section is to put the diaphragm on. I'm using a latex glove because that's what I had lying around in the lab at the time. I'm going to cut up along the edge of the hand so that I can get to the palm section, which is quasi-flat. If you have access to a balloon, it will probably be easier to use. Now we can tape the glove onto the end of the tube that doesn't have the cap. This is also easier with two people, but if you're doing it alone, I recommend taping on part of the glove onto the tube and then work your way around circumferentially, taping piece by piece as you go. Make sure to stretch the glove as you tape and ensure that there aren't any wrinkles. At the end, you can put another piece of tape all the way around to make sure it doesn't come off. The last thing we need to do is attach the hose to the barbed fitting by simply pressing it in all the way. Ta-da, the tube section's finished. Now let's move on to the gas side. I will assemble all the small components first and then at the end we'll attach it to the propane tank. We're using fittings that are designated as NPT or MIP. The NPT designation stands for National Pipe Thread or Taper. MIP stands for Male Iron Pipe, which is just another way of saying a male NPT fitting. NPT fittings are slightly tapered and we need to use something called PTFE tape or Teflon tape to get a leak-proof seal when connecting them. As you can probably imagine, it would be difficult to tape the female parts, so what we will do first is tape the male parts in our system. The first thing we want to tape is the hex pipe nipple. We're going to tape both sides because they're both male. The direction you tape the thread matters because if it is taped backwards, then the act of screwing in the connection will unravel and bunch up the tape. To make sure you get it correct for right-handed threads, hold the part in your left hand, point it away from you, Take the tape and hold it on the bottom of the thread and roll the part towards the tape roll. About three rolls should be fine, but you'll see people quoting more or less. You will need to leak check the system at the end anyway, and if a connection has a leak, then you've either done too much or too little. Once you're done with the first side, flip the nipple around and do the same thing on the other side. Now you can take the barbed MIP adapter and tape it in the same way that you did the pipe nipple. Here you can see the four parts we need to connect. First step is to take the hex pipe nipple and hand screw it into the regulator. Once it's too hard to hand tighten anymore, take two wrenches, hold one on the regulator and the other on the nipple and tighten them together. 
Now we want to connect the valve, so screw it in by hand to the other side of the hex pipe nipple. Again, use two wrenches to tighten the fittings together. You'll note that we bought the hex pipe nipple instead of a pipe nipple with no hex part because it makes it so much easier to tighten. Then we want to screw in the barbed adapter to the ball valve in the same manner, and again, tighten using two wrenches. Here's all the connections tightened together, so let's attach it to the propane tank. You may note that there are two types of threads on the propane tank. The inner threads are pretty fine, but we don't use them. We will use the coarser outer threads called Acme threads. Our regulator fits on the tank, and all we have to do is hand tighten the black adapter, no tools necessary. Last step on the gas section is to connect the same hose that is connected to the adapter coming out of the tube section. And that's it, we're all done. I have the tube placed on a couple 2x4 stands. Off screen I'm making sure that the ball valve is closed, and then I slowly open the propane tank by turning the tank's valve counterclockwise. Then I slowly open the ball valve, and you'll be able to hear a slight hiss when you do this yourself, indicating that gas is flowing. You won't need to open the ball valve that much, though. After waiting about 15 seconds to let the tube fill up with gas, I take a lighter and light the gas coming out the top. You might need to move your lighter up and down the tube to get all the holes lit. You'll note here that the flames in the middle are taller, because that's where we have our one gas inlet to the tube. But as the tube fills up with gas all the way, any change in flame height along the tube won't be noticeable. You can also make two gas inlet holes to the tube if you want, but I've found that one inlet is sufficient for good operation. Good. This is me adjusting the flow rate of the gas using the ball valve. You can experiment with different flow rates to find the level that gives you the best results. This clip is sped up and I don't have any sound for it, but all I'm doing is using a frequency generator app on my phone to play some frequencies through the speaker, ranging from about 300 hertz up to a little above 800 hertz. This shows the nice clean waveforms we can get with our setup. When you're done running the tube, all you need to do is stop playing sounds through the speaker, walk over to your propane tank, and then close the valve by turning it clockwise until you can't turn it anymore. After a couple seconds, I then close the ball valve. This makes sure the ball valve is closed the next time we want to run it. I hope this video was informative and helpful. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, let me know what I can do to make it better. Thanks for watching.